With this session update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. Republican leaders called a press conference earlier to talk about the agreement that they've reached with the DFL to provide additional funding for nursing homes and to authorize a bonding bill. Here's that media event. Well, thank you again for coming in this morning. It's great to see you. Uh, we have uh, a bit of an announcement to make this morning. I'm sure many of you have heard we finally come to an agreement uh, on a bonding bill. One of the biggest uh, issues that's been uh, plaguing us through this session is how we're going to come to a landing on this bonding bill. You know, with $19 billion surplus that we started the session with, uh, Republicans worked very hard on ensuring that the needs of Minnesotans are taken care of. We wanted to see that money going back to Minnesotans through tax cuts, through getting the money back through rebate checks, making sure that the institutions that we have in the state are taken care of, ensuring that wastewater, that infrastructure needs across the state are the number one priority with that money. We've seen the Democrats take a hard left turn and really lose track of what's important to Minnesotans. And so we fought throughout this session, even in spite of some criticism about how we were going about that, uh, to ensure that those needs were taken care of. Yesterday we saw a human services bill that really put into jeopardy our nursing homes across the state. Uh, and so we came together with the Senate and the House DFL and we worked out a, a deal that, that did a number of things. Number one, Senate Republicans and House Republicans worked very hard to get funding to nursing homes to ensure stability within those institutions going forward. And then secondly, we put together a bonding bill and got an agreement that is going to help all Minnesotans in the infrastructure across the state. Your wastewater, your roads and bridges, you know, the things that you need to run your cities and towns uh, to get from cities to towns, uh, we really prioritized. And we ended up with a very good bill at the end of the day, uh, concentrating on those needs of Minnesotans. So one of the other aspects that, that was really big to us was the, the tax rebates and the tax relief for Minnesotans. And so we fought very, very hard till the end, but continued to get pushed back. And as you see in the tax bill, tax increases throughout that, and there just wasn't an appetite to compromise on that. We tried every avenue that we could to compromise, get money back to Minnesotans, and continually got rejected on that. And we, we put partisanship aside and made sure that, that if we're gonna save one thing, we gotta make sure that we save our nursing homes where the most vulnerable is. And so we worked very hard in a bipartisan fashion to, to make sure that that happened, to fight for that. And I was so proud to have uh, Minority Leader Damoth uh, and I working together to do that. It was really a good joint, uh, joint work between the House and the Senate on, on those priorities. But I wanna turn it over to uh, Minority Lead Damoth to talk a little bit about the nursing home needs and what we've done for them. Thank you, Leader Johnson. It's good to be with you this morning. And as you've heard more about the bonding uh, portion of the deal that was worked out early this morning, I just want to touch on that nursing home funding. I know you've heard a number of our members um, from our side of the aisle in the House specifically raise that concern about the lack of funding for our nursing homes. And I want to remind you that since 2021, 15 nursing homes have closed their doors in Minnesota. And that is something that we have def definitely needed to prioritize. I would have to believe that with a proposed budget this year of $72 billion, that the majority, and I want to talk about the full control majority in Minnesota, would have at least prioritized some funding for nursing homes. Instead of doing that early in session, you can see that it has taken us until the very last few days to secure some funding for nursing homes. In the package that we've talked about, that Leader uh, Johnson has talked about, we have secured $300 million for nursing homes. It's very important that you understand that that is for nursing homes that are in crisis right now, not as a loan or something that would have to be paid back later, but it is to provide that funding that is so needed right now. It'll be spread over four years, but it is really important. Um, I also want to mention the fact that as we have been fighting for this, just to give you a little perspective, $300 million for nursing homes over four years as compared to $500 million or more that will be spent on what I call a luxury office building, the state office building renovation. Let me put that in a little bit more perspective for you. There's 134 legislators that office in the state office building. 
There are 27,000 seniors in nursing homes. There needs to be more, but there are empty beds, 1,400 or 2,400 empty beds across the state of Minnesota in nursing homes because we can't get the workforce for that. So just putting that into perspective, you can see why it is so critical for us that this was going to be included. Is it enough? No, I don't believe that it is enough for nursing home funding, but it's what was needed and it is a good start as far as where we are going to have nursing homes that are already into their reserves or have dipped very close to their reserves. It has done that for them and we are excited to bring that forward. Happy to take any questions if you have them. Can you talk about what you were offering with, in regards to tax cuts at, at the very end and what was maybe sure. So, so our big push initially was the Social Security elimination. That was a campaign promise both Democrats and especially Republicans made throughout the campaign and into the session. Uh, but we saw that the Democrats had no appetite in eliminating that. So instead of fighting that fight, knowing that they were, gonna, they were not going to accept that, we said, well, let's at least put, uh, we put a billion dollars in the tax target. We offered that as well. So they didn't have to raise taxes on Minnesotans. And they rejected that. And then what we said was, can we at least give 800 million back through some sort of a rebate program, much like the governor has proposed? Can we do that for Minnesotans? All of these areas, you know, were not agreed to uh, because it just was not a priority uh, of the Democrats. And so we worked very hard on finding different avenues to get that money back to people. Uh, at the end of the day, we we had to simply make sure that we save these institutions, and so we worked very hard on that. So we'll be. Uh, spending up to $300 million uh, on nursing home funding. Have the nursing homes given you any indication of how far this funding in the first two years would go, how many uh, facilities it could help out? Uh, I, I don't know uh, precisely on the numbers on that one, but I will say that the, just this morning, uh, I was pretty touching. I had one of the folks that works with the uh, with the long-term care and nursing homes come up in tears and just say, this might actually save our nursing homes. This is what we needed. Thank you. And that means the world to us and the work that we do. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know exactly how this is going to impact, but we know that it is going to be saving our nursing homes. So it'll be for nursing homes in crisis. Is there a way to, are you working out language to like determine which ones those are? Yeah, so watch your way. Um, we do have a number of members that are working. We've put together just kind of a small conference committee to work on the actual language that can get through to make sure that it is going to those, those nursing homes that obviously all of our nursing homes need it. But again, like I talked before, that it won't be a loan. It's nothing that will have to be you know, paid back or could hurt their reimbursement down the road. So that language right now is being worked on as we speak. And that's part of the finishing of this actual deal is that it is language that will help the nursing homes homes and won't create any additional issues for them. So the nursing home funding will be its own bill? Or is that going to be in the bonding? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, that'll be wrapped into the, the bonding portion of the bill. So uh, there'll be a cash portion, but there'll be a geo cash combined bill too. So you'll see two different bills come out of here. Not sure on the details of what that's going to look like quite yet, but as it gets formed, we just woke up here a little bit ago after after uh, late last night uh, deal. So uh, once we figure out how that all looks, um, we'll get that out too. There's a group of Republicans who wanted to hold up the bonding bill, and a group of Republicans who didn't really want to hold up the bonding bill. Obviously, one passed through the House. Um, can you talk about? I mean, does that prove in your eyes that it's politically advantageous to sort of use this as a negotiating tactic? Is that clear to you now? Do you count that as a victory? Or what's your takeaway, I guess, from a political standpoint there? Yeah, so I think we, we do have different priorities as far as individual members. And so, of course, the House is, they've got their election certificates and they can prioritize uh, those members how they'd like. Our team saw a lot of value in standing up for Minnesotans, for the tax relief or nursing home funding. And so it's not a, a gimmick or a tactic, but it's just a way of, of standing up to say, here's what's important to us. Come to us and talk to us. Let's work in a bipartisan manner so that we can get this done at the end of the day. And you know, I hope that you see right now that we worked hard and getting to this point and it's caused maybe some consternation, but at the end of the day, I think both sides based on this compromise are gonna see some value for that. 
And I'll add to that. You know, remember that 48% uh, of Minnesotans are represented by Republicans or Republican districts. And so it's a very close margin. And I have to, um, I'm very appreciati appreciative of Leader Johnson and the relationship that we have developed over this session, both as new leaders. Um, and I think that has served us well. We maybe take different approaches, but as far as working together and then coming together in a united front and being able to work with the majority in both bodies was helpful and I think that will serve Minnesotans better because of that work and the time that it took. Any other questions? I've got a question from Bill Warner, Minnesota News Network. He wants to know if you're disappointed with what remains for cash, with what remains in cash for bonding that it won't go to tax reliefs or cuts instead. Are you disappointed with that? Am I disappointed? Yes, I, I am very disappointed. I mean, this was a compromised uh, agreement that we had. Uh, so our big goal was making sure that we could get money back to Minnesotans. And so to see the Democrats just fight that tooth and nail throughout uh, this session was extremely disappointing because it's another broken promise uh, that they made during the campaign time. So, you know, and, and going back, you know, to Bill's question, I know he didn't expand on it much, but, but seeing the number of things, you know, talking about the tax bill that's up right now, um, they got done with that, it'll be on the House floor, uh, probably coming to the Senate this afternoon. To see the amount of things that are hitting that tax bill that neither party or neither side had seen before, like the e poll tab language and, and different things, it, it makes me wonder why we even had the first part of the session to begin with. Those bills are so skewed, so new to this body, and now they're just getting pulled in and it's an up and down vote. This whole process this year has been so partisan and so in the dark that you know, it's, it's hard to eke out a win. I'm glad that we came to an agreement and we're able to get things for Minnesotans, but it really seems to be if you're a bureaucracy government or a nonprofit in the state, you're doing really well, but Minnesotans really took the back seat in this session. That's why Lisa and I stood up to try to help Minnesota. Uh, we've been working very hard, and I think this agreement is a result of that. Can you talk about what bonding projects might be in the the pieces that you're deciding, I think you mentioned maybe wastewater, or what kind of things might be prioritized in the pot of your pop, pack, um, the, <laughs> the pot of um, proposals that you might bring? I, I think Republicans have always looked at the importance of taking care of what we own, um, you know, our roads, our bridges, wastewater. That list will be coming out, and you'll see that soon. I'd like to go back to the earlier question, though, from Bill Warner, you know, as far as do we wish there was more tax relief? Um, we do. And I think all of, Minnesotan, all of Minnesota was looking at a 17.5 plus billion dollar surplus saying, you know, go ahead and give us that back. And we heard um, originally, you know, back campaign time um, from the governor, uh, Minnesotans are gonna get uh, $2,000 back. And then it kind of backed off to $1,000 and then it went down and, you know, we're sitting at what we've heard just, you know, $200 and not even to every Minnesota every Minnesotans, um, you know, it's income cap guidelines. And that, that was uh, very, very disappointing, I would say. But we heard um, House leadership, Democrat House leadership in an interview last night talk about the proposed gas tax. We're sitting on a surplus. We're increasing the budget going forward. And yet the leadership in the Democratic controlled House said, we're really proud. We've been waiting for 10 years to do this. We are proud to be basically raising your gas tax to take care of that. You know, I, I struggle with that a little bit. I think Minnesotans were looking for some of that money to come back. They were looking for less taxing. We shouldn't be carrying a surplus every year going forward. We need to adjust how government is spending money so Minnesotans during this time of inflation can keep more of their money to pay for what they need. I know that on the floor with the um, previous all-cash bill that Senator Pop has brought forward, um, there was criticism of funding going to nonprofits, uh, somewhat $200 million or, or I can't remember the exact amount, but is that funding to nonprofits still in this agreement, or is that out now? So what we've done is we've put together an infrastructure bill that takes care of, like we talked about, the basic needs of Minnesotans. That's the priority of that geo bond uh, bill that we have. Now, of course, they've got their other projects they can carve up and they can pass out with uh, cash, and they don't need Republican help on those at all. But our, what we're concentrating on is where we have some leverage, and that's where they need our votes. Can you talk about the part of 
of this where you all agreed to expeditiously end the session or <laughs> however it was phrased, I can't remember in the exact wording, but what does that look like? I, I assume it, you still assume we'll be here Monday and, and whatnot, but sure. can you just talk about that? Yeah, and so I think, uh, you know, we've got a couple of, of things going on. First of all, of course, we're going to be debating these bills going forward. We, we agreed to reasonable times, so we'll continue to do that. As you see, the House has been doing a, a very nice job of processing through the bills and getting to the point where all of a sudden their desk is clear, so it gets to be a reviser and a timing issue where it, it seems like the end of session hasn't been planned out really well and it gets to be a log jam. Uh, we're very happy to help where we can get the session done. We're not going to be the cause of any sort of uh, hang up or whatever, but we still need to make sure the Minnesotans know what is happening in those bills as well. So uh, we're going to work with uh, Democrats on making sure the floor is done uh, in a very nice, timely manner. Uh, but right now, I think their issues are more how do they get their bills wrapped up. We're expecting the tax bill will come up on the floor as early as today. Um, wondering what your thoughts are about that proposal at this point and what we might hear from Republicans in each chamber. Do you want to, why yeah, don't you go Absolutely. Ahead. We have that coming up as soon as we gavel back in, um, and it should be just in a short period of time. Um, with that tax bill that's coming up, you'll hear a lot about the e pull tab um, issue that's coming up. It's incredibly concerning for all of our charities across Minnesota. Um, that language was, um, my understanding, not in the Senate. It is worse than what was coming out of the House. And so you will hear from specifically from House Republicans on that concern. Um, one thing to point out, though, is this tax bill increases taxes, not revenue raisers, but it literally increases taxes by $2.2 billion over the next two years. When we have a $17.5 billion surplus, you're going to hear a little bit about that throughout the afternoon, and I would encourage you to, to watch and listen to what is going to be brought up. And then I think another point to make is, is when you look just at that tax bill, it's $2.2 billion, but then you start looking at the other bills, like the transportation bill, what is it, $4 billion that are possibly raised in that one as well? You know, the housing bill was a billion dollars. If you live in the metro area, you're going to be paying an extra 0.25% on, on any sort of uh, sales uh, taxable purchase. I mean, the amount of, of taxes in this thing is going to end up, at the end of the day, somewhere being in the 9 to $10 billion range on Minnesotans. And we already had a 17 and a half or $19 billion budget surplus. So uh, to me, this is just the trains come off the tracks for Minnesota. Democrats today were really highlighting the child tax credit portion of their tax bill. So obviously, I know you guys have concerns with the overall tax bill. But can you just touch on that? What's your just view of that policy and that being such a large portion of what they do have in terms of uh, credits and cuts and such? Yeah, if I could quickly. So the idea that we're giving these child tax credits back, I think, is fine. But we've made it so expensive for families. If you go put tabs on your car, if you register your car, if you go to the grocery store, you are going to see increases throughout your budget. It's going to get very, very tight. So the idea that we're going to transfer some money over to you now through these tax credits is, to me, all of a sudden we're, we're running on government priorities, not family priorities. And so I know it's, it's nice and I, I can agree with the child tax credit idea, but we have made it so expensive for Minnesotans after this session that they're going to absolutely need that. And now we're running on what the government is prioritizing, not what families are prioritizing. Coming up next is a media availability with DFL leaders about a deal reached to provide additional funding for nursing homes and a bonding bill. Here's that media event. Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. I'm pretty sure it's Saturday. Um, so we're just here. Um, I heard the minority had a press conference earlier. I was hoping we could do one together. Um, but this is what it is. And so we're just here to announce that we have reached a bonding agreement, capital investment agreement. I think that's very exciting. Um, we had put one, this House had passed one earlier this year. We put it forward um, in the Senate. Unfortunately, the Senate uh, Republicans didn't join us. But we are glad now that we came together and have this historic agreement that will help communities all across the state of Minnesota. Sure, and I'll just say um, we had set aside 2.2985 in the capital investment target 
And if we had to just use that as cash, it would limit the total amount of projects we could do in the state. And so when we were in the go it alone mode where we had Senate Republicans refusing to cooperate, we had a $1. billion cash bill on the Senate floor ready to go. As a result of this agreement, there will be $2.5 billion in investments across the state. There will be $1.5 billion in general obligation bonding projects, and there will be a billion in cash projects. And so uh, we're taking uh, $300 million out of the money we had set aside for capital investments, and we're working together to provide one-time assistance to nursing homes on top of the pots of money that they have available to them in the HHS bill that we passed earlier this week or yesterday. Yesterday, um, In the uh, Health and Human Services bill that already passed, there is a $90 million fund for uh, workforce retention. And there is also $100 million, I believe, either, it's either 50 or $100 million in um, zero interest loans for nursing homes. So this $300 million will be on top of the amounts that Democrats have already allocated to nursing homes in the budget. So we're hoping to figure out a way to deliver this assistance to nursing homes that doesn't follow up their reimbursements in the future. Uh, we want to make sure that it is a net gain for them and that it doesn't just get subtracted from their reimbursements down the road and um, cause both problems for them and for the state budget. So over the next uh, 48 hours, the health and human services gurus who know the most about nursing home funding, which is very complex, will be working to put together a package that works for, for all of us. I think that it's great that we reached an agreement. Reasonable timeframes for the rest of the bills will be really important for us to finish on time with great results for Minnesotans. I'm a little frustrated that it took us until 1.40 in the morning last night to get this deal, but uh, better late than never, and it's a really good deal for all the communities across the state of Minnesota. And we'll take any questions if you have any. Why, why was the money for nursing homes all right for you to agree to when uh, Republicans had also pushed for things like, you know, bigger or more money for rebates or tax cuts or other things? So what, what about the nursing home money was more amenable to you? Do you want to speak to that or do you want me to? You can start. Um, we, we offered them uh, some options of what they wanted to do with money, and this was the choice that they made. We were open to other options, including increasing the rebates, um, but this was the choice that the Republicans made. How much would the rebates might have increased? That was, part of, I mean, that was part of previous negotiations, so we'll just leave it there. Um, Senator Johnson and I had multiple conversations about that. We had said numerous times that we didn't want to tie the bonding bill to the tax bill, um, but in conversations, um, might have been yesterday or the day before, um, you know, he expressed why that was important to his caucus, and so I took it to the speaker, and we continued those discussions, and then that's what got us here today, and I think um, I'm just going to go, this was the negotiated agreement, and I think it is helpful. Um, this will provide projects that communities want from wastewater to um, local parks to, um, I think money is going to go into help the women's Shakopee prison. So this is projects that will help people across the state, and it's jobs across the state, which is also important. So in terms of this deal, there are some GOP pro uh, projects added in addition to the $300 million that they get for, I guess, abiding by um, so the, the original. Clock. The original two bills were very e equally balanced. And then when um, we couldn't get an agreement with them to join us on the last bill, the cash-only bill, um, two weeks ago, we, we moved forward. So there are some um, House Republican projects in that bill. And then if you look at it, there's, you know, Representative Tapke in Shakopee has a project in there. So um, there were Senate Republicans who had projects for their community in that cash bill. But we moved forward because that's what we needed to do, because we thought we haven't had a bonding bill since October 2020, and we thought these projects were shovel-ready last summer when they didn't, you know, last May when they didn't pass it. We thought they were shovel-ready, these communities needed it, and so we thought it was the right thing to do. So we were prepared to move forward with a cash bill that had more Democratic projects, but there were Republican projects in there that helped. And I won't even say the Republican projects. We had projects across the state, some of them represented by Republicans and some of them represented by um, Democrats, but the projects are for the entire state and they will benefit the entire state and communities across the state. 
And I think it says it in the letter, but just to be clear, so any project that has been listed publicly on a spreadsheet when either House File 669 or 670 was passed or considered will get the highest amount that's been publicly revealed. So if somebody had a project that was at $5 million in the bills passed by the House and then it was reduced in the cash bill to 3.5, they'll be restored to $5 million in the final agreement. So it is going to be a quite a monstrosity of drafting for the reviser. And that's why we had given so many deadlines to the Republicans earlier. And so it will be a superhuman feat for the reviser to draft this agreement in time for us to get it done by Monday at midnight. And it just simply remains to be seen whether they can do that. It, it, it is um, an unreasonable expectation that we're putting on them, but they have very often worked miracles. And so people have pretty high expectations for our incredible nonpartisan staff. If it is a just paper push timing difficulty, I mean, do you envision having one day of a special session to finish that part of it? We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but I imagine everybody would be fine if we're if we're really at the precipice and they just we just can't make it due to the workload. And I'm going to go back to our um, both our partisan staff and nonpartisan staff are fabulous. They really do. Um, their best to make us look good, and they do their best for the state of Minnesota. They are committed to helping the state of Minnesota and helping this process go smooth. And as the speaker said, they've performed miracles before, so we're still holding hope that they can they can physically get this done in time, because that's our goal. Can you talk about the nursing home funding and any language that might, might be being considered to target nursing homes that are in crisis or in danger of closure? So we had yeah. a come close to the microphone. Oh, just sorry, in we had a lot of um, discussion in the health and the human services. Um, department committee. I know Senator Hoffman um, has been working with uh, Representative Knorr and Senator Abler all year on trying to find that work. Um, there's, the, there's the issues of how it interferes with their rates so they don't have to pay it back because it doesn't help them if we give them the money and then they have to, their rates get reduced um, or they have to pay it back and so they've looked at several, um, several deals to make this happen and several ways to make it happen and so they will be meeting today, um, possibly even right now, a group of rep representatives, a group of senators and the administration again trying to figure out how to best make this work. Um, and it might be it goes back to that retention, workforce retention fund um, because that will help the nursing homes but they do would like, they would like to be able to how do we best help some of those nursing homes. I know my nursing home that I hear from, uh, I think it's like the first time they've had to dip into their line of credit. Um, we have nursing homes that we know are dipping into their line of credit to pay a loan back before it defaults. And so there are some nursing homes struggling, not all nursing homes, but some are struggling. So how do we best help those nursing homes? Because they are across the state and we want to make sure, you know, if, if somebody can't take care of grandma and then that goes back on the family and that's just a lot of additional stress for the family. So we, you know, again, it's in this bill because we agree it's an important issue um, and we want to we wanna make it work for both the nursing homes and those those people that live there and their families. And I think the way I would think about that 300 is 75 million a year over the next four years. Some of the discussions we had last night were about the desire to have it <clears throat> spread evenly over the next four years. And I think in terms of uh, the Department of Human Services and the nursing home industry, it may be a lot easier to deal with 75 million a year for four years rather than 300 million at one time. I think if my math is right, you'll have some money left over in your target on the bottom line for capital investment. Is that just come in the form of another cash bill next year? What is? What do you do with that? Where does that go? Yes, I believe we have $828 million left in the bonding target. And then we have built into the budget forecast the ability to do an $880 million general obligation bond bill. And we've been talking with the Republicans throughout. We would love to have this be a bipartisan process from the beginning next year. Hopefully they won't sit on the sidelines um, and um, put our nonpartisan staff through this exercise next year. Uh, because I think we could have a very balanced 880 GO and 828 cash bill next year, which is what the state should be doing about annually right now. Well, I was going to ask, I mean, the 2.6 billion dollar package is is pretty large but you that you think there's room to then come back next year and do another one that's a billion yeah, because, plus. I mean you saw last year uh, in 21 and 22 Republicans completely blocked bonding so we've had two years without any bonding bill so we're playing catch up at this point this 2.5 2.6 billion dollar bill that we will be passing this year is not that big when you look at its uh, three years of bonding in one. 
And, and you look at the need across the state. I mean, the DNR properties, there's, there's a, you know, millions of dollars in deferred maintenance there. You look at um, the public housing, there is millions in deferred maintenance there. And I agree that's a lot of the federal, but, you know, there are residents, there are Minnesota residents, so we do want them to live in safe housing. And so there are needs across the state, and they just keep growing every single year. So we should be keeping up. Sounds like bonding will inevitably be the last based on the paper push, but how do you see the other remaining budget bills, tax bill, in terms of floor votes in the next? Do you speak to that? Um, I will continue to say, as I said all year, I don't have a crystal ball, but we're going to continue to have those conversations to make sure we I have 34 votes on the floor. Um, in terms of timing, we'll be doing the tax bill today. I anticipate we'll be uh, hopefully done by dinner, depending upon when we get the conference committee report. They just made a minor change in tax committee, a few minor changes, and caught some errors. So the revisor is revising the conference committee report. But we don't have a 12-hour rule anymore. So as soon as we get the conference committee report, we'll take it up on the House floor. We had talked to the Republicans last night about a, a debate going from about 1 p.m. to about 6 p.m. So we think probably in the House about five hours on the tax bill, which is why the Senate's not coming in until 4, because then we'll send the tax bill over to them. Anticipate that the transportation bill will be ready for action tomorrow. Hoping health would also be ready tomorrow, but the health finance bill, if health children and families finance bill is a very complex bill, and we're still waiting for that conference committee report to even be proofread. So it could be that it's um, taxes Saturday, transportation Sunday, health and bonding Monday. And then um, Senate also has the Uber Lyft bill, and um, there is House File 402, which pertains to the hospital um, merger situation at the University of Minnesota. I'm trying to think if there's, oh, and then there's a couple there's, there's constitutional there's, amendments yeah. floating around. Yeah, and there's also, we might be taking up later today, um, the eight, so Environment Natural Resources Trust Fund. The House has passed that. Um, we heard it over here. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm on the LCCMR, so they came and met with me in January and February, and I pointed out my concerns in that bill. Um, and then they've continued, they staff, my staff, and the advocates and the author continued to meet while I was out, and now, um, uh, Senator Marty has kind of taken over and kind of shepherded that through to get the, some amendments that we think are good for that bill and good for the state of Minnesota. So if that, if, if we can get that amendment done by today, um, we might bring that one up on the floor also today because that's um, an important bill. Minnesotans want to protect their air, water, land, and they like to fish. And so um, hopefully we'll get that done today. And so, um, and keeping nurses at the Bedside Act, you know, we spun off into a conference committee. They met uh, yesterday. I believe they've closed a conference committee report. And um, so I'm feeling good about that. And I don't know if there's any other dogs and cats out there. ERA. Uh, well, ERA had a hearing and rules this morning. I think it was about 45 minutes long. So we haven't really had the opportunity to dive into that in caucus. I know we have a lot of members who are still concerned about choice because we were able to protect uh, reproductive freedom in Minnesota statutes, but there has been some discussion about whether the Minnesota Constitution should also protect that. And so one of the conversations we've been trying to have with regard to the Equal Rights Amendment is its interplay with choice. And so the, the exact phrasing of that amendment I think is critically important. I don't know if we're going to be able to act on it before the end of this session, given that we have three days left. And I think that constitutional amendments are a fairly weighty concern. So I think, you know, the senator and I are working hard on both of these constitutional amendments to make sure they're actually ready to go to the voters before we pass them out of the House and the Senate. Do you mean concerns about choice, like that you might want to take up a choice amendment or combine them, or I just want to make sure I understand. Exactly. That. I think um, there are some who have argued that the Equal Rights Amendment in and of itself does not protect reproductive freedom. I believe that it should. I strongly believe that it should. And so uh, the question is, what do we need to do to it to ensure that that protection is there, if anything? I've, um, I've heard from a, a number of people that um, the governor opposed um, doing Minnesota care for uh, all adults, for all undocumented adults. Um, but that is in the, the health bill, and so I'm just wondering how you brought him along, how you convinced him. 
I would say you're misinformed because we have reached an agreement that is supported by the House, Senate, and the governor to provide that coverage. The governor didn't oppose it? The governor supports it. No. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Wait, I think we have one more. Um, with the, the Sanford Fairview merge, yeah. is there, is the um, public interest language, is that safe? It should be. I mean, my understanding is that Representative Bierman and Senator Wickland have are really close to agreement with everyone. It's a pretty short bill. I, that is one of the ones that's sitting on the Senate floor. Um, so I know, um, I because I represent the University of Minnesota, I've had conversations with the U, um, with the author, with some of the advocate groups, and, and, and helped work on that bill somewhat. And I know Senator Wickland has been working on it while doing two conference committees um, and working with Senator Representative Bierman. And so I think their agreement, and we're working to, again, I don't have a crystal ball, but making sure we have 34 votes and where we're at. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.